Hey guys, John here. So I wanted to uh, do a little video today on how to think like a developer. I'd written a blog post on this the other day. It could come from a question that I got, and I've actually got this in several different forums. So I kind of wanted to uh, address it here. But before I do that, I want you to think about what makes a developer truly a developer. And I'm going to give you my answer in a second, but I just want you to think about that as uh, I go through this. So I got this email question from Mike. He said, I'm stuck at beginner lever level. I followed tons of tutorials and did a three-month full-time web dev boot camp, but I can't seem to get past the hurdle of being able to write a program myself. I consistently fail interview tests as my pro programming logic skills are low. I seem to be stuck at this beginner level. I need to learn how to think like a programmer. Any ideas or tips? Now, I want you to think about that for a second because it actually doesn't make sense if you really kind of dive into it. How does someone spend that much time learning and still not be able to sit down and crank out an application? It really shouldn't be that way if you think about it. And I can just tell you from all the emails and things that I get that he's not alone. He's not the only one. So it's not something unique uh, to him. And so I, I just sort of wonder, is this something that, you, that you've struggled with? If so, let me know. Um, but if it is something that you have struggled with, let me sort of tell you how this happens. And I think it's one of the sort of dirty secrets of the thing that I do, which is the coding tutorial sort of industry. And I know that sounds a little bit like, okay, whatever, but I really truly believe this. And it is the problem, and I've talked about this before, but it's the problem with project-based courses, which I do think they absolutely have their place. I've come around to them a little bit more over the last few years, but and I think they do have their place. But when you follow along as someone else builds a program, no matter how good of a job they do of trying to, to show you the, all the little things that they had to figure out, you still don't have to actually solve them yourself. So you don't have to solve all the little problems uh, that come up. They're solved for you. And it's rare that an instructor even mentions them, let alone makes you solve them. They just sort of often run through the code and then show you what to type. Uh, and a good one might mention them offhand, but almost nobody labors over those points. And there's a reason why. It's because, frankly, coding students don't like it. I've done it before, and I get all kinds of flack when I do it because coding students don't think they need it when they absolutely do. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there between teachers uh, and students. And so what happens is you never learn how to connect the problems to the applications and vice versa. And so that's why you can go through a, just a crap ton of training but feel lost when you sit down to write an application. If all you've ever done is project-based courses or you've never actually specifically learned application design, then you've never actually done this part of it. And the really important point about that is it's the most important part. right? A lot of coders, new coders especially, get caught up in all of the code and the, the functions and all the little details and so forth, and that's what they get kind of wrapped up in. But as you do this longer and longer, what you start to realize is that it's about creativity, it's about problem solving, it's about being able to take all of those individual skills and pieces and put them together in something coherent. And so the analogy that I'd like to use is, imagine that you're a painter who learns all of the technical parts of painting a landscape. So you learn how to paint trees and mountains and water and grass and all that stuff. And that's all good, right? You need to know how to do those things. But will just knowing those things make you a great painter? Will it make you good at composition? Uh, will, uh, will it make you good at putting all of those things together into a painting that elicits emotions, that makes people say, wow, that has a perspective. So the, the core kind of question is, does a well-executed tree make you an artist? And my point is that it's part of it, right? You have to be able to execute, but it's not all of it. And it's not even the most important part. It's not the main thing. The main thing is the ability to capture moments. Uh, elicit emotion, to have a point of view, and then be able to execute on that point of view. It's having, uh, we, you hear people say this all the time, it's having an eye for design or for art or whatever. It's having that perspective and point of view and being able to, to then bring it to life. So it's sort of similar with web development. In my opinion, what makes you a developer is your ability to identify problems, 
come up with new ideas for solving those problems in better ways and then execute on those solutions. And that is what you miss with most project-based courses that just sort of show you what to type. So to me, the answer is to specifically learn application design, to understand how to connect problems to their solutions and how to design applications from scratch. So, and this is precisely why I named my object-oriented programming course Build Professional Applications with Object-Oriented Programming because it's not just about learning object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming is a method, in, in a lot of ways these days, the method for application design. And it, it's so because it's a really good one. When you understand it and how it connects to object modeling and database structure and problem solving and all those things, the code almost literally writes itself. Now, again, I know that sounds sort of kind of hypey or whatever, but that's why so many people swear by object-oriented programming because it gives you a way forward for designing your applications. You don't have to guess or wonder or stare blankly at a code editor. You know where to start, you know how to build it all out, and you know how to proceed at every step. Now, with any application, there's still gonna be problems for you to work for. That's what your job as a developer uh, to, is to do. So th there will always be those things, but with object-oriented programming, you have a roadmap for how to get your application built. So anyway, that's what I go through in lesson 11 of my object-oriented programming course. I, I try to tackle that and give you that sort of artistic uh, method of application design, uh, teaching you how to design applications in the most scalable, modular, modular and efficient way possible. Uh, so if you've been dealing with blank skin, screen syndrome, I think this is sort of the cure for that. Uh, in any case, you can start taking the course for free on my free tutorial sites, uh, site. Just go to johnsfreetoots.com slash OOP. You can sign up absolutely free and start taking the course. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time.